Hey YouTube, so today I'm going to show you how to create a fireball ability inside of Roblox Studio. So first I'm going to create the actual part. Uh, I'm going to use a sphere. I'm going to set the size to 2, 2, 2. Uh, let's make it orange and then neon. I'll set can collide to off and leave anchored as false. Then I'm going to call this fireball and I'm gonna add two attachments to it I'm gonna call this one zero uh, attach and zero and then this one's gonna be attachment one now create a trail and over here just connect this and that just by clicking on it so now um, set this to face camera and you want to move the attachments to the side of the part and there we go now we have a trail to make it look a bit better let's set the lifetime to 0.25 set the width scale to this and set the color to whatever color you're part is. So now we have a cool looking trail on our fireball. So I'm going to move this into replicated storage so that we can duplicate it later. Next thing you want to do is go to starter character scripts and create a local script. I'm going to call this detect button. I spelled that wrong. There. Now create a local variable. Uh, this is going to be the player game.players.local player then we're going to get the mouse of that player so we're going to do player colon get mouse you also want a remote event so go over to replicated storage create a remote event and call it fireball events game.repstorage.fireballevents and now we're going to do game get service user input service dot uh, input begin connect a function to that we're going to have input and the um, game process event so what this does is it uses the user input service to, to detect whenever a player is pressing a button when they do press a button it will connect a function to that and inside the function we're going to be using the input which is whatever button they pressed and the game processed event which detects if the player is inside of the chat or if they are in the menu so now we want to do if input dot key code is equal to enum dot key code dot q so if they're pressing the q button and they're not uh, in the chat or in the menu and um, not debounce so debounce we're just created we're gonna create a new variable for that we're gonna set it to false and then inside of here we're gonna set it back to true and then fire the remote to the server giving it the mouse dot hit up P and then we're going to wait whatever your cooldown is. I'll set it to 0.5 and then set debounce back to false. So this might look a little bit confusing if you're new to scripting. Basically debounce is just a way of getting uh, creating a, a cooldown for your script. So right now it's off cooldown. And then when they press Q, it sets it on, on cooldown. So you can't press it again until after f half a second and then it's back off cooldown. So that's all that does and when we're firing the remote events to the server we're giving it the position of the mouse which that alone doesn't do anything what we need to do is actually create a script inside of service script service and this script will be used to detect whenever a remote event is fired so we're gonna get the remote first of all which is fireball events and so whenever this remote is fired I'm going to connect a function to that 
we're going to get the basic uh, the default parameter which is the player and then the mouse position which is what we sent the the remote over here so now inside of this function we're going to duplicate the fireball uh, that we had in replicated storage so we're going to create a local variable for that this is going to be local fireball is equal to game replicated storage fireball then colon clone we're going to set the fireball parent to the workspace we're also going to set the uh, the cframe equal to the player dot character dot humanoid group part dot cframe times a new cframe value zero zero negative two so what this line of code does here is it sets the location of the fireball right in front of the player so now we want to create a force that is opposite to the gravity uh, because for this example we're going to be using a velocity on the fireball but if we do that it's going to fall down uh, because of the gravity acting upon it so we want to create a, uh, a force that is directly opposite of gravity so we're going to create a new variable local uh, new force is equal to instance dot new uh, body force new for, uh, new force dot uh, the force of the new force is going to be equal to a vector three value uh, it's just going to be zero comma workspace dot gravity comma zero also let's go back up here and set fireball dot mass list equal to true so next thing we're going to do is a uh, new force not parent is equal to the fireball so now we have a force equal to the gravity and or opposite of gravity and the fireball next we want to actually set the velocity of the fireball to make it move so we're going to do uh, local or we're going to do fireball dot velocity we're going to set that equal to a new c frame value and first thing we're going to do in here is get the player dot character dot humanoid group part and dot position then comma uh, mouse position so this is creating a new c frame value uh, between it's going to be like starting at the humanoid root part position and then it's going to go to the wherever the mouse is located then we want the look look vector um, and then multiply that by let's do you can do 100 maybe 50 so now we're able to create a fireball and the fireball moves so we have no problems there next thing I want to do is create a function whenever the uh, the ball is actually touched so fireball dot touched connect function and we're gonna get hits so whatever hit the part and we're gonna do fireball destroy and then if it dot parent find for styled humanoid so this is detecting if a player actually touched the fireball then we want to get their humanoid and we want to deal damage to it so just take damage and then let's do 50. oh we also want to check and hit uh, not hit is descendant of uh, player dot character there we go so that should be fine let's go ahead and test this out inside of the studio so now when I press Q a fireball should appear let's see okay so the problem is it's destroying it even if it touches our character simple fix we just move it inside of there okay so now 
Uh, something's going wrong. Let's see. Oh, I think what I forgot to do was multiply this times fireball dot mass or get mass. I'll probably just get rid of this line right here because now we don't really need it. So now that should actually work properly. Let's go ahead and see. There we go. So now we have a fireball. It goes directly where my mouse is located. And if we create a dummy inside of Studio, it'll do damage to it. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the tutorial. If you liked it, please do leave a like. It really helps me out. And leave some comments for what tutorials I should make next. I'm always looking for new ideas. And yeah, bye.